Let the trade wars begin. I was watching uh, the cable channels this morning and both uh, Larry Kudlow and Peter Navarro uh, were on uh, two of the shows. And I got to tell you, uh, the comments that they made were, in my opinion, absolutely and unequivocally ridiculous. Donald Trump is a well-known non, I repeat, non-free trader. Donald Trump has been talking about tariffs for the last 30 years. Now, unfortunately, Larry Kudlow is a free trader, but apparently he sold his soul to Donald Trump uh, when he obtained his position. Now, Peter Navarro is a well-known economic finance, I'm sorry, economic advisor who is a flippin' nut. He has no basic standing with the majority of the uh, financial and economic uh, industry whatsoever. Now, let's roll this back to who fired the first shot as far as uh, our current situation is concerned. And I would submit that it was Donald Trump who fired the first shot on this when he instituted a 25% tariff on steel imported from Canada, the EU, and Mexico. 25% on steel, 10% on aluminum. And what did he initially say was the reason for uh, the tariffs, and in particular the tariffs with Canada? Because Canada represented a national security issue. Now folks, I gotta ask you, has anyone ever made a statement about Canada being a national security risk. Canada has been shoulder to shoulder with us in every last war that we have fought. Canada has sided with us in our war against terrorism. Canada basically is not going to war with the United States and that would be the only way that there would be any disruption in the amount of steel, and they produce high quality steel, by the way, that they supply to the United States. Now, with that being said, if the United States felt that the supply of high quality steel is such a major issue, why don't they just instruct our steel manufacturers to convert plants over in order to produce the amount of high quality steel that we need and subsidize them if necessary. In my mind, that basically solves the problem. But in case you didn't know it, we have a steel surplus with Canada to the tune of approximately $200 billion. That's a steel surplus. Now, obviously, uh, we have deficits in other areas, but the overall trade deficit surplus with Canada is $200 billion, basically, to the good for the United States. That means we are running a surplus with Canada. So uh, again, unless the United States, Donald Trump believes that Canada is going to turn into a Russia or worse, there is absolutely no reason for us to institute this type of a tariff against Canada. Now, with that being said, a couple of days after he made that national security statement, he changed his tune and then it was no longer Canada being a national security 
an issue, but it was now an issue of uh, trade deficits. But that too, as I stated earlier, was a lie because we are running trade surpluses with Canada. But again, all this is solved by the United States getting with our steel manufacturers and having them produce higher quality steel that we use in building planes and ships. If they need to help subsidize those guys, nobody should actually have a problem with that. But then Peter Navarro got on, hang on a second. Yeah, this nut, Peter Navarro, got on, I guess, State of the Union or one of the other uh, shows and said that there should be a special place in hell for uh, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau uh, for his statements. That is a stretch at the best. But if there's a special place in hell for the statements that Justin Trudeau made, there should be a special, special place in hell for the statements made by Donald Trump. Folks, what is going on here is actually the machinations of a goddamn idiot by the name of Donald Trump. And you have all of these quote unquote financial advisors falling in line with what this guy wants to do. We actually need leadership. And the only place that we potentially can obtain leadership from is Congress. And they need to rein Donald Trump in. Now, Donald Trump came into that G7 meeting showing total disrespect for the people. Why do I say that? Well, you would think that Donald Trump would have been able to arrive at the meeting on time. But no, Mr. Trump decided that he wanted to arrive at the meeting late and that he was going to leave the meeting early. What type of respect is that for the other six countries attending the meeting? And to be honest with you, I side with Justin Trudeau, and I side with the uh, president of uh, France, who's made a statement, a provocative one, that he had no problem creating a memorandum for the G6, which would have excluded the United States. Now, folks, Donald Trump has stated that if people don't fall in line with him, i.e. the uh, countries, Canada, Mexico, the EU, if they don't fall in line with his thinking that he is going to stop trading with them. Does that remind you of a bully? Because it damn sure reminds me of one, a guy who wants to take his basketball and go home, except he is not the one that's going to end up paying the price for all of this. It's going to be us the American citizens that are going to be paying higher prices in the supermarket, department stores, etc., in the car dealerships, all over the place. Not to mention Donald Trump's uh, main line of support in the Midwest, the farmers. They are going to see severe reductions in the amount of products that they can sell overseas. And guess who's waiting in the wings in order to step in to provide for their needs? Number one, it's going to be China. And they are already making overtures to uh, the European Union. Number two, you have Australia, who is more than happy to step in to uh, export more into Europe and into Canada. And to be honest with you folks, they already have, based on Trump's previous actions. Then you have Brazil, and they are more than happy to try to fill the void. Guess who really isn't uh, a main uh, player in all of this? The country that Trump believes should uh, be readmitted to the GS7, making it the GS8, and that is Russia. Folks, Russia is not a main economic player 
in the world economy. Italy's economy is larger than Russia. Two of the uh, satellite countries around Russia have larger uh, economies than uh, Russia. And let's just back up to the original reason that Russia got kicked out. They invaded the Ukraine. They stole Crimea. And Donald Trump basically had the nerve to say that it was Obama's fault and that if he was president at the time, uh, the, he might have taken a different action. Yeah, he might have, but the only action that would have done something would have been to put our U.S. troops on the ground in the Ukraine and to have to fight the uh, Russian troops to kick them out of Crimea. And folks, we all know that all it would have taken was a spark for that thing to escalate into something that nobody wanted to see. Now, bottom line was the United States does not have a mutual defense agreement with the Ukraine. NATO doesn't have a mutual defense agreement with the Ukraine. So there was no legal way for NATO or the United States to step in. And yeah, I know the Ukraine was asking for a weapons, blah, 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 blah. And in my opinion, Obama probably should have given them some. But that's neither here nor there. It was going to take troops on the ground, boots on the ground, in order to make any type of a definitive change in the Russian invasion of the Ukraine and Crimea. So, folks, Justin Trudeau did the right thing. He stood up for his country and his people. He is not going to be pushed around by Donald Trump. Donald Trump is a bully, and the only thing a bully respects is somebody that's willing to stand up to him and uh, put one uh, right between the eyes. And that statement that Justin Trudeau issued is exactly that statement. Now, I took a look at the Canadian TV to see how uh, they reacted to uh, Trudeau's uh, statement and Donald Trump's action. And I gotta tell you, um, the station that I took a look at might have been um, left-leaning, but it appears that the Canadian people are 100% behind uh, Trudeau. And we have some uh, politicians in this country that are 100% behind Trudeau. So this could turn into something that nobody wants to see. I'm praying that we don't have a major trade war with our largest trading partners, Canada, Mexico, and the EU. But, folks, um, I got a feeling that this is going to be get worse before it gets better.